to this conversation now. A joint investigation by the Daily Maverick and Amapungane has uncovered 836 million rand fraud related to a contract for hospital oxygen plants. It's claimed that fraudulent documents were used to secure the tender for various government facilities. The Daily Maverick's uh, Peter Louis Mayberg joins me now for more on this story. Uh, Peter, uh, good evening to you and uh, thank you very much for your time. It's a complicated story, so I'm hoping that we can go uh, at it very slowly so that we take the viewer along. We're going to get to claims suggesting that the sole director of this company may have uh, died or may have been found dead. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's start with this company and your article is very clear that it used fraudulent documents in order to bid for this tender to supply these oxygen plants at the 55 public facilities, public health facilities. Uh, take us along yeah. as to how you came to that conclusion. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just a, just a very brief recap and thank you for helping us give air to this very important issue. You know, it certainly is a very big chunk of money that is now earmarked for these PSA oxygen plants. And it's, it's really important that we ensure that the project is actually spent or executed in the correct uh, fashion. So a quick recap, a couple of weeks ago, Daily Maverick published a first article on this issue. We kind of looked at who this entity bulking was that had uh, secured the lion's share of this contract. And we could find a very little traces of the entity kind of, you know, having a footprint in the medical space, in the medical technology space, and thereby being equipped, you know, or experienced to deliver on this sort of project. And that really raised the, the red flags. But now, in our latest joint investigation, uh, Daily Maverick has now partnered, partnered up with Ama Bungani, and I'm working al alongside uh, investigative journalist Azara Karim, and we've, we've uncovered what appeared to be just an additional set of red flags regarding Balking's bid submission. So, you know, when, when a company like this is scrutinized or adjudicated upon, you know, for, for supplying uh, products of this sort, you know, highly technical equipment for, for installing in hospitals, you would assume that there should be a couple of things that are in place during the bid process. And one of this kind of uh, foremost, you know, the foremost concern with, is around the, the SAPRA certificate uh, that the South African Health Products Regula Regulatory Authority. Um, those certificates are given to companies to kind of enable them to, to lawfully trade in medical equipment like oxygen plants. And we then found that in the case of Bulking's bid, you know, the tenant that they'd submitted to the Industrial Development Corporation, which <laughs> I want to make uh, muddy the waters too much now, but the, the IDT is implementing this project on behalf of the Department of Health. Yeah. So when, when Balking submitted its bid, it included a, a SAPRA certificate in its bid submission. Um, and we found that that SAPRA certificate does not belong to Balking. They were adjudicated on the basis of that certificate, um, but it is not Balking certificate. It belongs to a third party company called Atlas Copco. It's a local subsidiary of a multinational firm. And they've confirmed that they did not give any consent for the use of their SOPRA certificate in any tender process. And that really is a very uh, alarming um, uh, a manifestation or occurrence of alleged or, or possible tender fraud. And then there are a number of other issues, also discrepancies around the address bulking used for, for tendering for this project. And then also a, a witness signature that was included on one of the bid documents that Bulking submitted. Yeah. The reason the viewers may be interested to know why the focus on Bulking, and I think it's part of what you have mentioned, that this is the company that has received the lion's share of this contract. Now, interesting, Peter, that uh, the, the IDT, this is the implementing agent on behalf of the Department of Health, they were answering questions from the Sunday independent media. And I just want to extrapolate a question from there that could potentially speak to some of what uh, you have already suggested. There is a specific question that says, is the company that received the largest award 
based in South Africa, and the IDT, this is the implementing agent, they respond saying, yes, both companies are based in South Africa. However, original equipment manufacturer might not be based in South Africa. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the question that talks to your point about whether or not this company is above board in terms of the submissions for this tender. The question is, did this company meet all the requirements specified in the tender document? And the response is, yes, they met all required as stipulated in the expression of interest document. How does that response uh, fit in to what you say you have subsequently discovered? Is the IDT telling lies here? Um, I would say we have a very strong suspicion that the IDT is not being truthful in its rebuttals around this issue. Um, we've, of course, also seen, you know, certain rebuttals has been circulating. Uh, the, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, uh, uh, Minister Dee McPherson, has, of course, also put some pressure on the IDT, being the parent department, you know, that, that um, holds sway over that entity, the IDT. And we've seen some of their responses. It's been circulating. It's been reported on. And certainly there, there are things to pick from the IDT's response that does not seem to hold up um, when, when the facts are considered. So they, they keep on harping on this issue or this, uh, the, the um, supposed SOPRA certification that bulking included and they said was not required or it was required. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of toing and throwing about that issue. But the fact remains that the, the SOPRA requirement was initially, um, and we, we've reported on, mentioned this in one of our earlier reports, our first report, is that the SOPRA requirement was indeed included in the original instruction implementing um, IP documentation submitted to the IDT. And that kind of seemed to have, uh, it fell to the wayside during the tendering process. Mm. But the question then remains, um, if, if the SOPRA certification, according to the IDT, was not a requirement of this tendering process, uh, why would they then, after the fact, uh, essentially scramble and um, insist that the, the entities does possess the SOPRA certification, albeit through these third-party entities like Atlas Copco, for instance? Um, the IDT uh, very much knows that the SOPRA certification is a lawful requirement for any entity to install or work with or um, you know, um, um, supply the sort of equipment that was tended in this project. And I suspect they uh, possibly deliberately omitted that detail to ensure that there were certain contractors um, you know, given a, a green light to clinch this contract. And then they are now in the invidious position where they, they kind of have to clean up and uh, provide SOPRA certification and all sorts of spurious arguments around when the SOPRA certification came about and whether it was not required. But certainly uh, there are holes to poke in the IDT's rebuttals. Um, this is this is not a, a project that we are putting to bed by any means. Yeah. Uh, Daily Maverick and Amar Bangani is still very much, um, you know, digging our teeth into this issue. And we will report on this matter in the coming weeks. And, and that'll include um, the, the IDT's handle, handling of this contract, certainly. All right. Let's then move the conversation along, Peter. Let's talk now about the purported demise of the sole director of this company because your article says three days after you met with Mr. Ndlovu and his lawyers in Johannesburg, a report from independent media came out. In fact, this was a, a social media post, came out and said that the sole director, the name is mentioned here, a Natin Ndlovu, was quote unquote allegedly found dead. Do we have any independent verification of this? Were you able to confirm this? You know, it's, it's been the, the most bizarre couple of you know days that I've ever experienced around you know researching a you know uh, South African or a, a public tender in this country. We we met with Mr. Ndlova at these offices uh, together with their lawyers, their offices in Rivonia on that Friday. That would have been the first of November. And then on the, the evening of the 4th, the following Monday, 
There was a, a message on X by a South African journalist, uh, Mr. Tavo Makwakwa, uh, who said that Mr. Ndlovu had allegedly passed away. So that was the first time I'd ever encountered the term allegedly passed away. I didn't know it's an allegation to pass away. Um, that being the case, um, we subsequently jumped through all the hoops, possibly at, at that point that we could have, to try and verify whether this was indeed the case. Um, and really, my, my colleague, especially, you know, deserves credit for this, um, Azara Karim, um, ran around Gauteng from mortuary to mortuary, contacted pretty much um, all the police spokespeople and, and police stations that could have been privy to any knowledge of somebody having passed away. Um, and we made several efforts to contact the family members, to contact business partners, former business partners, and other associates, uh, people associated with Mr. Ndlovu. And as I'm sitting here, um, you know, more than a week on, I'm in no position to confirm any circumstances around his passing or not. Um, and, and that certainly still, still seems to be up in the air. We're looking to firm that up still. Because, you know, it's, it's not just a, a matter of, you know, getting a sensational news story out there. There, there are crucial issues around the, the rollout of this project now. Yeah. You know, these, these vital oxygen plants need to be installed in hospitals. And if it is the case that the sole director of the biggest contractor in this project is now deceased, then one would assume the IDT has to possibly reconsider this contract or retender uh, because its its principal implementing agent has now disappeared from the scene. Yeah, it's just really absolutely in shambles as we sit here. Very briefly, Peter, and the interesting bit is that the very same lawyers that you spoke to when you met Mr. Ndlovu for the first time, they have now come back to you when you pose the question whether the claims that he is no longer alive, what have they come back to you and say when you when you confronted them with this information as to whether or not Mr. Ndlovu is still their client? Yeah, that's a, that would have been a natural source of you know information just to confirm whether he, he has passed away or not. And they were also in no position to confirm or deny whether he has passed away. Um, they, they told us that they'd been in contact with some of his family um, and that they would let us know should they uh, get any further information. But, the, you know, the last time we checked in with them, they wouldn't confirm any details around his supposed passing. So we, we couldn't be, be you know, um, we couldn't receive any f information either way from, from the law firm. Peter Louis Maybeck, thank you very much for your time. It's a story that we certainly are going to follow with interest uh, from our side. But thank you very much for your time tonight. Uh, Louis Peter Mayberg, you will know him, written a couple of books based on uh, some of his investigative work he's done in the past. He's with uh, the Daily Maverick. All right.